so here's what I'm thinking. We're at the New Pond location today. And uh, we're going to set up for the first time in many years my aunt's old rendezvous tent. Which is a canvas tent, no floor. We're going to make it a hot tent. It's going to get cold tonight. Actually, I'm going to leave this camp set up for about three days. It's actually supposed to get very cold. It's even supposed to snow. So, no better time than to do a hot... This is my last chance until fall to do a hot tent. So, I'm going to give it a try. It might be a little warm in there, but temperature's going to dip down into the 30s and 40s at night. So, just a very small bed of coals in the, uh, in the wood stove. Should keep me nice and warm all night. All right, choppity chop chop. I'm talking about. Oops. Well, clearing the area was just step one. I think you all know what step two is. saw this really straight tree and it was about the perfect diameter for a ridge pole. Uh, that was the thing, my aunt gave me the tent but she said uh, none of the poles are left, she don't have none of the poles left, so. Believe it or not, there's a method to my madness. This, this is the better end. It's amazing what you can bring with you when you have a conversion van. <laughs> okay. This is going to be the part that scares me, because these have to be straight up and down, in, at least in comparison to each other. So I'm going to find something to use as a marker. That knot right there. Okay, straight up and down. Okay, I got a new strategy. I'm just going to uh, peg down one side. Get it nice and tight. Canvas tent, 5,653, Nathan, zero. If I have to, I'll sleep in my van, and I'll do some van camping. But I'm not wasting any more time on this tent. <laughs> Haven't seen me do it that way yet, have you? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give myself one last ditch effort to get this stinking thing up. And I'm gonna mess with it for about 20 minutes. If I don't get it, then I'm going to start cleaning out the van and getting it ready to sleep in. Oh my god, it's up. I got some more stakes to put in the front and some gaps to close here and there. But it's up, it's standing, it's on its own. Sunset is very, very beautiful. All right, I scavenged some poles, 
get them cleaned up. I'm going to cut the biggest ends off of all of them first to make my bed. And hopefully i get enough left to make a tripod out of the skinnier pieces towards the other end. Well, she's getting dark out, but never fear, because shelter is up, and my bed has, all the pieces are cut for my bed, all I have to do is arrange them in the right order, biggest to smallest, and then lash the two end ones, but I'll do that at some point here. I've got enough wood left to make a tripod, then I'll start on supper. I just like having the work done first. And I don't eat till late anyway. So, this is perfect. So I got my bed done. Got my bed roll all laid out. So I got this thing put together. And uh, I'm going to uh, get it fired up pretty soon. But I gotta cut a hole in the tent for a stovepipe jacket and take care of that now it's time to cut up some onions because what better to make than French onion soup on a camp out <laughs> we're gonna throw in oh, about a half stick of butter fourth cup I think it is and a couple tablespoons of olive oil I'm gonna let them let that start melting down and and uh, get some other things done this part makes me very nervous but this is an old tent. I'm sure I can't mess it up that bad. So, I'm going to very carefully... I'm going to try my pocket knife first. If this don't work, I'm going to try the Mimora. But I'm going to very carefully cut a slit. Oh, I hate doing this. Alright. Well, it's go time. So let's throw some firewood in. Let's see if we can't get something going here. There we go. Definitely doing things the Steve Wallace way today. So the, uh, the wood stove's been going for about 10 minutes, and it's hotter than balls in here. <laughs> uh, you're only going to want a smoldering fire. Jeez. So our onions are about halfway there to where I want them. So I'm going to add a, a few cloves of garlic. I'm going to throw a little thyme in. I'm going to grind a little pepper in it. I'm going to stir those up and let them bloom. This is some homemade wine that I made. Um, it's dry red wine. It's a Rona berry wine. Choke berry as they call them. So I'm going to, uh, I don't know, I'm going to dump a couple glugs in here. The next step is we're going to add water until we get the consistency of the soup that we want. And uh, an ideal consistency is some onion in every bite. I'm going to add about approximately two tablespoons of soy sauce. I've got two different things I'm using for beef base here. One is this restaurant style au jus mix. You can get this at a lot of grocery stores. I've seen it tons of grocery stores. But I also use just some this is a kind of a wet um, beef base the kind that you keep refrigerated and uh, so I'm gonna throw some of that in too I find that 
that one is more salty than the restaurant style au jus mix, but they kind of go good together. So I'm going to go ahead and get that mixed up. And uh, you can always add more beef stock to make it saltier. So I'm going to purposely undersalt it. And uh, I'm just going to simmer this for a while. So we've moved inside the uh, tent now. It's getting late. Anyway, so one of the things that, that I want to do is uh, have a bathroom in the tent where it's nice and warm. And uh, so uh, there's nothing worse than waking up in the middle of the night and you've got to go number two. And uh, you have to go out in 30, you know, in freezing cold. If you're like me, then after you've been sleeping for a while, like, and you get out of your cozy sleeping apparatus, like, you get cold, or at least I do. So what I'm doing is I'm digging a little pit here. It doesn't have to be very big. Like, that's plenty big. And now, I'm going to simply set my old, that's my old pooper from, uh, Rag bry. I'm going to set it directly over that hole. So when I poop, the poop will go in the hole. And then all I have to do is backfill the hole. So I'll leave the dirt chunks right next to the uh, pooper here. And I'll just put the sh shovel kind of in the ground there. And now that'll get rid of the smell. It'll cover up the poop. And then for the next night, you just have to move your toilet over a foot or two. Now some of you might think this is gross, but I really don't. Like, it totally makes sense. It works. So, it, like you say, you, as soon as you're done pooping, you just bury it. Same, and your toilet paper too. It'll decompose in the ground. And then you just dig another hole beside it, you know, and move your toilet so on so if you're staying multiple nights hopefully i don't have to i mean if it's during the day i'll just go outside but in the middle of the night yeah you know this would be pretty cozy with that with that uh fire blazing man it's hot in here <laughs> Woo -wee. this is nice though this would be good sleeping and it only takes a stick like every couple of hours so that's super efficient. I'm just loving this whole hot tent thing. This is great. The fire is burn dying out. I look at my tent and all the glow. <laughs> Pretty cool. Let's check it out. This is home for the night. And it is roasty toasty warm. So to the right I have my pooper. To the left I have my bed. Here's my wood stove. I'm toasting some uh some bread on top of it and keeping the soup hot and uh, I mean I gotta say this is just cool I can't explain it but this is one of the most zen things I've ever done I try to make my bushcraft trips all about how comfortable can I get how comfortable can I make myself um, compared to being at home and so I'm slowly figuring out what works. This is a, a different kind of camping. I've never done anything like this. And this is why I so desperately want to build a cabin. And one of the whole things that got me started doing this whole thing is the fact that our country is completely taken over by communists. And, and we're a goner. Like, America's a goner. And so I thought, well, I better learn some survival skills. I better learn some wildlife, wilderness, you know, those kind of skills. And so that's what I've been working on. And But it's evolved into a hobby. So not only am I learning while I'm doing this, but I'm also just having the time of my life. Anyway, I think it's about time to eat. This is kind of meal that make you sleep real good. You still cut fire up. <laughs> Just like a baby. If I don't sleep good tonight, I'm going to be mad.
Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. I survived. <laughs> the wind picked up. And uh, I blew my stovepipe kind of side. Didn't blow it off or over, but I blew it kind of sideways. So I'm going to... I'm going to get a piece of tin and cut out a hole for the stovepipe and put that over top of, of the stovepipe jack because the stovepipe sleeve thing is just like a, a aluminum foil-ish type material so it, it easily gives. Um, but I think a piece of tin will hold that stovepipe in place. I found out that my aunt has the original stakes for this tent so I'm going to pick them up when I get back to the house. And, um, she told me that I set it up wrong, too. Uh, it's supposed to go all the way to the ground, like the flap that you see on the bottom. I don't know if I can point to it using the camera. That flap right there, that isn't supposed to, like, hang. I thought that was supposed to be, like, a flat spot. But apparently, nope, those are just to ensure a tight seal to the ground. What sucks about that is... If I set it up that way next time, not only will it be smaller, but it'll also mess up where I put my stovepipe hole. So I either set it up like this every time, but as you can see, there's huge gaps along the bottom there. And if I were to set it up the right way, there wouldn't be gaps. So lesson learned, I, I might have got a little too excited to have the stove in it and everything, and I should have waited until I knew how to set it up right before I went down that alley but it's too late now so i'm gonna make it work anyway man it's cold out like ooh, it's cold this is one of those days that i could literally lay on this cot all day with that wood stove going it's just one of them cloudy well see for yourself oh just kind of a dreary day i'm gonna button this bad boy up because i have somewhere i have to be and so i'm gonna button this bad boy up and uh, hopefully it's still standing when I get back tonight. I'm not going to get back till late tonight, probably after 10 o'clock. But I'm going to give it another go.